Hi, I'm Emily Gable-Luddy, and I want to welcome you to the Creative Talent Network Expo here at the Burbank Marriott Hotel Conference Center right across from our Burbank Airport. This is an amazing opportunity to meet the animators and bring together the young people who are looking for jobs with the animators who have the jobs. I think you're going to find that the CTN Expo, spending its fifth year here in Burbank, is just an extraordinary event. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go. I'm standing here with Tina Price. She is the woman behind the whole idea of the Creative Talent Network, CTN, um, at the Expo. And I wanted to ask her a few questions this morning, Tina, if I can. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to even start this Expo? Well, I was at Disney for 25 years, and um, in 2006, they changed the nature of their business and they let go uh, quite a few of the artists. So I started the Creative Talent Network for two reasons. One was to stay connected with my peers that I had been working with for 25 years, and the other was to provide an arena where they could promote themselves. My motto for the show is to put the talent center stage. That's my mission statement. So we focus on the talent, whether they're in animation, visual effects, video games which is really the heartbeat of the business here in Burbank so that's why I chose Burbank to launch this show in for its fifth year now and what is the biggest change you've seen over the last five years since you started it till what I saw yesterday and today are tremendous crowds coming in some of the biggest changes I've seen is the growth of the uh, the show where the information is getting out. What I do is I put talent and make them accessible to younger talent who are interested in being in this industry. The kind of access that you don't get anywhere else. So the word is getting out, they come, they know they can talk to pros, they can have real conversations and walk away with connections, maybe get jobs and have a better kind of idea of their career path. I think this is so fantastic. I mean, one of the things I see, uh, I guess, are a lot of young people carrying portfolios around. Is that what they're doing, showing them to other animators who are here? Yeah, a big part of this show is connecting the pros with the younger talent emerging artists and we also host recruiting. This weekend we are hosting 300 interviews and we've got over a dozen studios and producers looking for talent. So a big part of this is connecting them and they'll bring their portfolios with them because the talent has, the pros here will uh, make themselves available. That It's just allowed, just walk up to anyone, show your portfolio, ask questions. It's encouraged to do that, to get the feedback. So they really get to meet the people who are behind the illustrations. Exactly. They're face to face with the people who make these films. Eric Goldberg, who's the animator of The Genie in Aladdin. Drew Struzan, who is the illustrator for all the poster artwork for David um, George Lucas, and on and on. We have over 300 pros here that come from all over the world. We have Andrew, Andrew Ruman from Passion Pictures, who came from London. and. Yeah, so we bring them all together for three days under one roof. Well, I just want to congratulate you and also thank you for choosing Burbank, the media capital of the world, for this expo. From what I've seen, it is enormously successful, and I hope to see you for many years to come. You absolutely will. I'm proud to be here. Thank you very much for taking time to ask me questions. You're welcome. Hi. I see you're a participant at CTN Expo. I'm the mayor of Burbank, and I'm going around talking to people. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Wesley. Hi, Wesley. Hi, I'm Ryan. Ryan. Hi, I'm Edgar. Hi. What's your name? Edgar. Edgar. Okay, so uh, what caught my attention was I was looking at some illustrations here in someone's portfolio, and I don't know whose portfolio it is. It's mine. Can you tell me a little bit about the work you're doing? Uh, this was my version of Peter Pan, and it was a, a darker older version with like a, an older target audience. And what was the inspiration for this older version of Peter Pan? Uh, I, just, I, just, I just thought it would be a fun project. So Tinkerbell is a robot and Captain Hook is a, uh, he's a military captain now. And the pirates are like uh, this oppressive regime and Peter Pan's sort of a James Dean, Rebel Without a Cause kind of guy, and, and Wendy's this kind of, you know, creative person who is just bored with her posh London life, and uh, so that's kind of where I was coming from. There really wasn't a, an inspiration, I just thought it'd be cool to try. I think that's very cool. Ryan, you're a participant here, so are you at a booth inside, or what are yeah, you? Yeah, I'm, I'm selling a, a, a book. Well, you, you want to tell us about your book? 
Uh, it's just uh, landscapes around Burbank and stuff. So yeah, digital paintings. So that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Where did you come in from to come to CTN Expo? I'm coming from Utah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So you flew in and to the airport? No, did. we actually drove. Did you? Yeah. 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 Well, this is this is so great. I want to thank you so much for just spending a few minutes talking to me this morning because I was here on opening day and it was like really awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Thank, thank you very you. much. I'm standing here with Mike Kunkel who does Hero Bear and he's done a number of books using boyhood heroes. And so, Mike, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. What was your inspiration for the, the characters that you use in your books? My son. All right, tell me and, all about and my, it. And my daughter. It's my kids. For me, doing all ages books was all about creating stuff for kids and, and families and offering more content that actually gives more all ages fun to them. So a lot of my stories stem from my kids and my childhood. So this is totally a homegrown family kind of inspiration. Yep. He's, he wants to be a writer, so eventually we'll get something together and we'll, he'll write, I'll draw it and we'll do something together. So the fun of it is I've always encouraged them to be creative and now they're finding their own paths of being uh, a new avenue for creativity, you know? So that's, that's what I wanted to do. And then why the bear? Uh, it's, I've loved here our, our polar bear since I was a little kid. There's something about them that is, has a nice, um, uh, ah. there's one, when it starts out as a plush, you can't, you can't help but love that. But if he turns into that, then there's a big, there's a big bodyguard there, you know. And I like that, that feeling of having someone. What if your best friend was a superhero? And that's what it came down to. Well, I think your books are probably introducing superheroes to a lot of young kids, and I, I want to thank and adults too. I think thank you. I want to thank you so much for spending a little time with us this morning. Absolutely, thank you very much. It's been wonderful, and uh, just I hope everybody finds more fun stuff here. This booth is Woodbury University, right here in Burbank. And I'm here with Shia Muscovich, and I was going to ask her a few questions about her work. What is your inspiration? My inspiration is, um, like, my inspiration is really, like, the character. I'm really, really inspired by when, when, um, when someone's able to make a character really um, pop out of the screen like they're a real living thing, you know? Like, it makes you forget that it's, you know, a drawing or like a doll playing on a, um, on a screen because sometimes they're like made in computers. I right, well, they, yeah. And um, people forget that when, when, they, when the animators do like a really good job, you know? And then you end up loving the characters. It's amazing. I really want to bring that to people, you know? And that's what inspires me. It's what got me into animation, you know? Have you been to the CTN Expo before? Yeah, I've actually volunteered um, like two two years. Um, I'm actually the head volunteer for my school this year, so it means I organize the other volunteers also. Um, but I love being here; it's great. I'm gonna try to volunteer as much as I can um, every year. Cheyenne, I think it's just wonderful that you're a part of this whole proceeding today, and I hope that you find a job through this process as well. Thank you very much. I hope to be here um, for as long as it runs. You know. It's a great experience. Get to meet tons of people, my heroes, that kind of stuff, you know? I want to ask you about your inspiration for doing these three-dimensional models and how you got interested in the stop motion. And then if you can explain to our audience how your camera and the computer work to start showing a stop motion animation. Okay, so, um, well, I was inspired by Tim Burton on uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. So that's how I got into stop motion and animation in, um, in that regard. And what we're doing right now is, um, my friend here is just pretty much moving him uh, a little bit uh, for every frame, and I'm just taking the pictures for him. Uh, we're using uh, the program Dragon Frame, so um, as soon as he places the character of where he wants him to be, I'll just snap the picture and um, you can see the movement in the program. What I'm doing right now is I'm trying to do a demonstration for stop animation. Um, so we're going to have different characters that are going to be taking uh, different pictures at different points and angles. So you have to do everything in little tiny stages though. The littlest bit of motion is all you really need to express a little bit of movement. And so you're taking one picture every you know, two or three steps, just trying to do a little bit, maybe not even more than like maybe half of a, a, a centimeter of motion. Once it 
uh, gets too much of a step in between, you're going to have a lag and just loses the, uh, the appreciation of uh, fluidity. So this is a very time consuming process because you're taking a lot of pictures over time, it's a lot of trial and error, but it's also a lot of fun. I was going to ask you, what is, what is the advantage of this over animation and computer animation? Because this is, a, as you say, it's a very long process. Well, this is all done by hand. So all of these models are already made by the, um, the people over here, these wonderful artists over here. And uh, so everything that I'm doing right now is just playing. <laughs> but uh, um, just quite simply put, it's really a lot of fun you can have just, just taking pictures a little bit by a little bit and seeing what kind of story you can try to tell with nothing but just stop animation. I'm with one of the participants in the CTN Expo, and I wanted to ask her a couple of questions about her current experience. So, hi, glad to see you. Have you been to the CTN Expo before? I have not. This is my first visit. And I wanted to ask what your experience was sitting down with some of the animators, what you showed them, what you were hoping to see, and what you brought with you today. Well, I was able to sit down with um, Elena, and she, I, we were discussing what possibilities I have as a traditional sculptor and how I can um, pursue an uh, animation career. So that was, um, it, it was a really neat experience. <laughs> really excited about it. <laughs> uh, so great to hear. Where did you come from to today's uh, expo? Uh, I came from Rancho Cucamonga, so not too far. <laughs> so is this the first show for you? No, I'm kidding. Three, no, the first time, actually third year on uh, CTNX uh, Burbank. We come every single year, it's awesome. We go to a lot of uh, trade shows in Burbank, actually. Sigraph, CTN, uh, we check them out. We're going to come next year. Uh, Stephanie, she's our recent graduate from one of the programs. Uh, she's here to talk to students, peer-to-peer, uh, -peer and show her portfolio as well. Well, Stephanie, let me ask you a couple of questions. What kind of advice are you giving the students who are talking to you? Um, well, generally they're just wanting to try out either concept art or the 3D animation and because I did concept art I tend to go through the program and what we did and what I learned from it and also the key elements like um, what we do in class or how you end up with a portfolio because we go through all the process of learning all the little pieces and then putting them together being ready for the industry afterwards. May we look a little bit at your portfolio? And maybe you can tell us a little bit about what we're looking at? Um, well, this is a project that, um, for my portfolio, I based it on the story of Matilda uh, by Roald Dahl. And uh, it's just some story moments of her in the library because she's a five-year-old little genius that loves reading. Um, so it's just trying to get the story moments, the lighting, and the mood of, like, um, of the piece. So that would be more for inspiring like a movie, would have like, ideas of what they want to do, and you give that feeling that they want to convey. Um, should I flip through? Yeah. Um, and then just in the same way, like uh, key points with just thumbnails of different moments, um, just for every different scene because of the story evolves and how the color evolves through the story and uh, that's another environment piece. Um, we're just again giving options of daytimes and colors and shades and then you can go through uh, to like characters so then again Matilda as a character and just exploration of her character, the way she moves which uh, would be again then transferred to if you're working with an animation studio for a project then they would need to know how the character looks like when they move and their personality through it so you're just giving that information visually of Do you sketch this out or are you using computer uh, aided graphics? Um, I tend to, for example, for the characters I often sketch in my sketchbook and then I'll scan it in and then use Photoshop to tweak it and then paint it. Um, so that's usually the fastest way of doing it. Um, so, and it gives a lot of options and you can add textures or photos into it. Well, I want to thank you both for taking the time to talk to me this morning. It's fantastic that you're here from Vancouver. I am so impressed. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, I'm standing here with Andy who has a very intriguing piece of software and I think he's a vendor at today's expo and I wanted to ask you Andy how often you've come to this expo and then maybe you can talk a little bit about what you have here that you're offering other animators. Uh, this is my first time uh, at the expo um, we're also a sponsor as well so um, um, and we're having a, a really good time um, and it's been very useful lots of people coming around and seeing the uh, seeing the stand 
um, and uh, we're here to uh, promote our software which is uh, very popular in the UK but we haven't really sort of been over to uh, the States before to uh, promote it so uh, now we're here and, um, and enjoying it and having a great time. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how your software works? It is, um, it, it's uh, basically splits the uh, the drawing from the animation process so you you draw um, like in uh, normal 2D animation but then you rig it into a skeleton um, and then you can animate it like it's 3D animation so we're taking the best of both worlds in terms of the technology uh, enabling people to work much faster than they ever used to be able to and what we've managed to achieve in the UK is uh, we've managed to uh, keep a lot of the animation work um, in the UK uh, that was originally going out to, um, to the, the Far East and we're hoping to do some, some of the same thing here to uh, create lots of jobs for local animators. Well, I can tell you as media capital of the world, Burbank would like to see lots of jobs for local animators. Well, if we can repeat the success we've had in the UK, then um, we, can, uh, we, we definitely think we can help. Since this is your first time here, I wondered if you could share with us a little bit about your impressions of this expo. It's exceeded my expectations. I mean, I'd heard a lot of good things about it, but the number of people here and the quality of people here as well, um, just in terms of you know um, how friendly they are and how interested they are in what we're doing, um, it's been really great. So I'm very happy, and I fully intend to come back next year. Well, Mr. Blaisdell, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to share with us a little bit about why you're here at the CTN Expo, and welcome to Burbank. Oh, th thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> We're here at the Nickelodeon booth. Nickelodeon, of course, is part of the Burbank family, one of the top animation studios in the country. And Amber has joined me today, and I wanted to ask her a few questions about the setup today for Nickelodeon itself. Hi, Amber. Hi. Nice to see you guys today. Well, uh, Nickelodeon, we're so excited to be at CTN again this year. We've probably been here for the last five years, and we just keep increasing our presence, um, and we're just so excited to be back. There are a number of people sitting at tables behind us and behind you, and I wondered if you could tell a little bit about what Nickelodeon is doing today at the CTN Expo. Um, we're just here to meet as many talented artists as we can. We have, um, we've been trying to create a big synergy between all of our lines of business. Uh, we have people from New York here, from the digital content development team, our animation development team, our uh, creative resources team that focuses on character art and illustration, our artist program. So we have many different um, lines of business here that are looking for great talent. I just wonder what you find exciting about this whole day and this whole week of activity. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's lots of people that are excited about working in the business. So um, we know in Nickelodeon, we're really right now on a mission to find new creative, innova innovative talent. And we just want to be, you know, where the buzz is, where people let people know that Nickelodeon is a great place to work and uh, that we want you, you know. So that's why we're here. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. You. I'm standing with Eric Gonzalez, who has one of the most original animated characters in the whole expo. Eric, how are you today? Good, thank you very much. And I just wanted to ask you, first of all, what inspired you to develop these characters, and could you give us a little bit of background about them? Um, the inspiration was basically my, my culture, my roots. Uh, I'm Mexican, my parents are from Mexico. I was born here. Uh, my, Mexi my parents are from Guadalajara, Mexico. Um, I mean, the Day of the Dead is just such a beautiful holiday and so many colors and it lends itself so well to characters, to animation, to cartoons that, you know, I was looking for a subject to do a, a project about and I just, that's what I chose because it's something that I'm passionate about. Um, everything we do is try to, you know, we try to do it because we love, because we love it. I became an artist because I love to draw. So that's why, we, you know, we're doing this project. And how many years have you been coming to the CTN Expo? Uh, we've been exhibiting here for three years. Um, this is our third year now. We uh, we missed the very first year that, that they started doing it, but we, we started it right after that. Um, it's been a great experience. It's a great show. So many great artists here. It's very inspirational. And then when you when people come to your booth, what are they asking you? And what are you talking with them about? Um, well, like you, they are asking me, what, you know, where do we get the inspiration for the story like this? Um, we're a little different than. There's a lot of just like concept artists and stuff here, but we're actually here selling our uh, children's book. Um, but yeah, it's just it's something that, you know that we love to do. I mean, it's just it's a little different than what everybody's doing, basically. So many of our community members are also Spanish-speaking, or they have English as a second language, and 
and I look forward to seeing those animators come forward just the way you've been inspired to come forward. Yeah, I mean, I because of my roots and my you know my Spanish, my Mexican heritage, and I speak Spanish. I feel like I have a little bit more to offer in that sense to the Latino community as far as uh, content. You know, um, not everybody is able to do a Spanish. This, these books are written in English and in Spanish, and a lot of our audience appreciate that because they can read it to their kids, especially, <clears throat> especially uh, Latin American parents who want their kids to to instill these values and these cultural things in in them and have them learn Spanish and not forget their their, their language, their culture, and their roots. Um, it, it's something that I feel like, you know, my parents are, are proud because I'm, I'm doing something that's very cultural and it, and it goes back to our roots as well. Well, you're a very talented young man and I want to thank you so much for spending some time with me. Thank you very much. It's been a fantastic experience walking through the CTN Expo today, seeing everyone from students to animators to artists to sculptors and even vendors who are selling new kinds of software to help our animators get jobs and come up with even more creative ideas. I look forward and we all look forward to seeing CTN Expo here next year and you all get ready, get your portfolios going and I expect to see you around in 2014. Everybody, from all of us to all of you, Happy, Happy Holidays! Holidays.